Hello, I'm Phil Berman from Balanced Catamarans. I'm sending good wishes to people around the world, to our Aussie friends, European friends, American friends. Uh, we're all getting through this COVID crisis. Uh, over the past couple months, I've done videos at my place in Florida from my home uh, here in Philadelphia. Now I'm here in our offices in Philadelphia. I hope this finds you all well and healthy. Uh, I've been inundated with some emails this week from customers and people in the sailing community um, telling me that a French builder had um, made a strong effort to uh, do a duplicate of um, our Versa Helm, a concept of the Versa Helm. And uh, I found it fascinating and interesting. Uh, I think what happened is we were at the Con show last year uh, in France with the Balance 526. And I suspect a lot of uh, consumers came to that show from Europe who weren't familiar yet strongly with the Versa Helm and really fell in love with it. And some of the French designers came and said, you know, yeah, this is great. And probably some of the consumers said, hey, this is something that I want on my boat. And so this particular builder um, built one of their boats without the Versa Helm, but announced last week in a French magazine that they're going to do a helm. Um, they call it something else that is uh, really quite similar to what we've done. Um, we knew it was gonna happen and we're not, I wouldn't say profoundly upset about it because af after all mimicry is flattery on some level. And <clears throat> you know, when I uh, founded Balance, the whole idea was to see if we could create like really fine catamarans and innovate wherever we could innovate in ways that made sailing easier, uh, made single handing easier, made sailing safer, uh, more fun. Uh, and in particular, I was trying to design a boat that my wife and I could sail together, a boat that could perform really well, but which I could single hand if necessary. Uh, and that's a lot of what led me to working on the creation of the Versa Helm product. One of the things that uh, I've noticed on our YouTube channel and in some social media circles is there's some confusion amongst consumers about what the Versa Helm really is. And some people say, well, you know, lots of pivoting helms have been done before. And that's absolutely true. Uh, monohulls have had a lot of different pivoting helms before. Uh, even on the Lagoon 62, on some of the flybridge boats that I've been on, there's a helm that pivots, um, you know, to, the, to, to starboard and to port uh, several degrees. Uh, there's a lot of different uh, pivoting helm concepts. Um, there was a catamaran that was built in Thailand some years ago, uh, which one of my friends owned. It's called an Alibi 54. They've since gone out of business, but they had a helm that canned out uh, to where you could sort of sit on the side deck in a little chair and look at the sails and have a kind of sporty feel. Then it came down into the cockpit, but it was designed with kind of a sporty mentality, but it wasn't a helm that was designed for really piloting, looking through the boat and having all the sail handling in the same place. Um, what people don't understand about the Versa helm, what makes it unique and what makes it really function is that it was designed to do several things uh, that other pivoting helm stations haven't done. So let me just talk briefly about what these things are about the Versa helm that make it unique. First of all, I wanted to have an up helm station where you had access to all of the lines for reefing the boat, hoisting the mainsail, operating the topping lift, operating the jib, so that the boat could be single-handed, so that the helm was there and the reefing and line handling were there, like any single bulkhead catamaran. Um, I think that's a really, really nice thing because it enables you to steer the boat down in heavy air and feed the mainsail out. It enables you to you know, re reef the boat by yourself if you need to. All the lines are coming to that one place. That's a really, really, really important thing about the Versa Helm in the up helm station. I also thought it was important that when you're in the up helm station, you could have four corners visibility of the boat, whether you stood up on a little platform if you were a shorter person or if you're a taller person, you didn't need to so that when you're anchoring the boat, you can stand there and see the bows, talk to the person that's maybe up on the bow anchoring the boat. When you're docking the boat, you can see both bows, and we designed the sliding top wide enough so that you can just look like that to see your aft port uh, stern, and, which is important because in a catamaran, you're always docking stern first. You should only dock stern first on a catamaran, in my opinion. 
And so on the uh, Versa Helm, in the Up Helm station, you can do all those things perfectly. If it's sunny outside and you just want some sun protection, you just pop up a little sun bimini because you don't need to dodger that off for cold weather sailing or rain foul weather because in that condition, you slide the top closed, you bring the helm down, all the way down, and then you pilot looking through the boat. And the huge thing about the Versa helm is the sight lines looking through the boat. And it might seem simple to some people, but it's not. It wasn't simple for us to do all the sight line studies that we did from up top and down below. The way we created the salon windows, the mullions the, that we did, everything was about removing blind spots because the way the Versa Helm is now is that if you were out in San Francisco Bay and it was kind of raining a little bit foggy and you still wanted to sail, well, you can sail the boat from down there because you've got this visibility all around you um, and still have fun. Concomitantly, if you are in uh, Gothenburg or Sweden or something like that and it's kind of cold, it's a, a, a end of season type of thing and it's kind of rainy and sort of nasty and you've got to pilot into a harbor or something like that, well, you've got your helm and then you've got your throttle so that you can throttle the boat and steer the boat or come around crab pots in Maine or that sort of thing. Um, so anytime the weather's really foul, you, you have this ability to stay warm and comfortable because the helm is all the way up near the middle of the boat. You're very close, the windows open up, you can see where you're going, you can see what you're doing. And with the down helm seat now, you've got this great place to sit and watch and the on-watch person can be at the, the down helm, just sitting there with a chart potter in front of them, and if they need to make a course correction or something, they can. Somebody else can be sleeping in the salon convertible couch, so that if I was piloting with my wife and I, like, you know, in an overnight thing, I, I'm, I'm invariably on my watch, I'd be sitting in, you know, in the, in the Versa helm at the down station, and my wife would be you know, sleeping in the couch or vice versa. Uh, and that's how our customers have been finding that they're, they're using the boat on the, on the pass. It's all about these sight lines and also about, you know, the way we've, we've fabricated it. Um, and look, we're flattered that uh, another designer has copied us because it's the greatest helm station in the world. It removes more negatives than any other helm station. It makes sailing easier and better. And it's gonna reduce sun exposure and skin cancer. It's gonna keep people from getting cold and flu because they can be down in a really protected area from rain uh, and cold weather. And so we're really proud of it. And, and we think consumers always want better designs and better builds. And this is what makes competition such a healthy thing. Um, at this time, I'd really like to give credit though to the people that really invented the Versa Helm. And it's like, I had this crazy idea um, with this idea of a Versa Helm. I, I spent so much time thinking about helm stations on catamarans and the things I like and don't like about them, and I knew there had to be a better way. And I partnered up with Anton Dutoy in South Africa and Jonathan Parmon um, in St. Francis. And really it was the three of us working together that ultimately made the Versa Helm really work. Um, Anton and his team worked on sightline drawings. We worked on all the ergonomics of, of the thing and the sitting and, 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 and that sort of thing. And Jonathan then took those drawings and did mock-ups on the floor, um, testing everything, coming up with ideas, thinking about, thinking it through. We did that and it wasn't easy to do it right. Um, and I just want to give credit to those guys because Teamwork is really what brings about great products and we've really got just this incredible team and my hat's off to you guys for working this through with me. Um, we're now putting it on all of our boats, the 52, the 48, and the 44. Um, and you know, it's just really a, a, a product that we're really proud of. One of the things about balanced catamarans that a lot of people talk about is the Versa Helm. You know, they, they recognize that it's such a great thing, but I don't think they realize that the Versa Helm really is just one innovation that we we created that's making sailing easier and better for people. Um, in the end, design is like hundreds of little decisions that collectively add up, you know, to a better boat. And the thing 
Where I think I've been really benefited a lot is that I've been sailing catamarans since I was 13 years old and racing them and I'm now 64. And at my other company, the multi old company, I was talking to our sales manager last week, we've now sold over 900 catamarans. I have been for the last three decades flying around the world, you know, surveying catamarans, testing catamarans. At any given time in my other company, we have lagoons, Fountain Peugeots, Katanas, you know, you name it. There are very few catamaran models that I haven't seen, sailed, and surveyed. And at the end of every sale, I get the advantage of being able to talk to people about what they liked about their boat and what they didn't like about their boat, both from a functionality standpoint, but also from a build quality standpoint. What are the things that failed them or frustrated them in their ownership of the boat? And what were the bugaboos about the ergonomics of the boat, living on it and also managing it and handling it? Um, so I took kind of all that learning from all of my customers really over the years um, and brought it to Anton and Johnny and then we just collectively banged heads to create what we feel are, are really just like exceptionally well thought out catamarans. And when we didn't need to reinvent the wheel, we, we wouldn't reinvent the wheel, but when we needed to reinvent the wheel, we did. But it is really these subtleties added up that create a really special boat. And the thing about balance is that we are basically always going to be innovating and trying to improve our boats. Like our current project, we're working closely with Integral on these new integral lithium systems. You know, many consumers don't understand that, you know, you could throw lithium batteries in a boat or alternators on a boat or whatever, but in the end, it's the integrity of the entire system design that really makes the difference. And that's the detail, the devil in the details that leads to a better product. You know, over the years, I've seen a lot of our customers frustrated with their boats breaking down and maintenance problems and access problems and things like that. And you know, these boats are complicated, so you're never gonna be maintenance free, but the goal is to make them as maintenance free as you can, as easy to operate as you can, as reliable as possible, as energy efficient as possible, as easy to sail as possible. So you have all that side of it. And then you have the livability side. How do we create boats that have great spaces to read, to relax, to lounge, to pilot the boat up and down? great beds, great ventilation, uh, functional galleys, enough drawers and cabinetry in the boat so that you're not climbing over each other like you're on a camping trip, um, enough payload capacity to carry the things that you know you're gonna carry, enough light air performance so that you're sailing most of the time and not motoring, um, all these kind of things that collectively make a big difference for people that are really passionate about sailing and, and, and like to sail. Um, so in any event, we're glad that our competitors are um, improving their boats uh, based on using some of our concepts. Our hat is off to them. Um, we've benefited enormously from all the learnings that we've had over the years from the many other builders and designers that I've worked with and seen. Um, and so, you know, really on them and, and we're just gonna keep innovating at balance um, building better boats. And let me tell you something, boat building is a real team effort. And you can have great design and you can have mediocre build. The goal is to have great design and great build. And I tell you, when I'm in our factories in South Africa, working with these guys, seeing the teams, seeing these craftsmen who have been learning their trades for years and are teaching the trades to the young bucks that are coming up, um, it fills me with a lot of pride and a lot of joy uh, just to see that going on because we're really like, we're, we're, we're competitive, not so much, at least I am competitive, not so much to win, um, but because competition creates innovation and it creates excitement and it creates enthusiasm and it drives creativity. Um, you know, at my age, after sailing all my life, the thing that is the most fun about balance is just the creative aspect of it, working with the teams and the builders. And so you can look forward to a lot of innovations coming up from us in the months ahead. Uh, 
we're working on a lot of projects that are really exciting and I'll be sharing them you know over the next year um, in the meantime Gosh, let's hope for a little normality coming up in the next few months. I, I'm sitting here with a fake boat behind me and, and, a, and a model boat here, and I'd really like to be out there sailing right now. I'd like to be back with my friends in South Africa. I'd like to be back with my friends in Europe. I'm used to traveling 100,000 miles a year uh, uh, by air, and that just is not happening now. Um, but we'll return to normal, and we'll be out sailing soon. Um, so uh, keep your spirits up, stay positive, and stay in balance, and I'll see you next time.